Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, my name is uh, Silagi Ladislaw. I, uh, I wrote as a programmer many, many programs. So uh, I wrote uh, also uh, operating system, real-time multitasking operating system. I uh, impersonated many, many roles. I was a project manager, I was a business analyst, I uh, lately worked as a tester, and now I train. I train business analysts and testers. Uh, I trained around uh, 600 testers in Romania in the ISTQB certification schema. Uh, we are going to tell a story about uh, what problems and solutions do we have in uh, agile projects. And uh, when I say agile projects, I do not mean Scrum. I mean agile. Uh, I... Uh, I should thank uh, Ralph because uh, my task is uh, very easy now. You already know everything about testing in Agile projects. So, <laughs> so I might finish very quickly. Uh, anyway, I want to keep um, the rhythm, the pace of this presentation very quick in order to let you ask more questions. Uh, you see, I want to tell you a story about uh, agile testing issues, what to do for a quick agile testing adoption, what not to do, and mainly solutions for this very, very big problem. How many of you experienced the difficult task of migrating as a tester in a new Agile project? I think many of you. It was an easy or a difficult task. I think it was enough, enough difficult. I experienced in um, the last years a very typical approach. I don't call it solution. It's not a solution. Uh, you see, the typical approach is let's push the whole team into the swimming pool full of water Perhaps they will manage to learn to swim. Perhaps, hopefully. Do you consider it a wise solution? No, it isn't. <laughs> now, what's the traditional way of testing? The traditional way is uh, as an independent team using uh, a very, very classic like management schema. So uh, you have a test manager or test lead, name it as you want. And you have the rest of the team. Uh, you have a V model to handle the process. So uh, you have something uh, very waterfall-like. You have uh, those sequential test phases named uh, planning, analysis, design, implementation, execution, 
exit criteria, reporting, closure. Seems familiar, no? Uh, we have test case based execution, which is predominant. And uh, we have written communication with the developer's team using bug reporting, no? Classical way of reporting bugs. Now, what do you think we will have in an agile project? We will have a self-managed team, a team uh, so we will have no more an independent, isolated testing team. No more. We will have uh, no more test manager in the room. We will have a self-managed team integrated in the project team. Uh, no more uh, V-model. We will have an iterative incremental testing life cycle. And uh, with some intermixed testing phases. Those quadrants, you remember those quadrants, Brian Merrick model. The number of the quadrants so you don't do the testing numbering, I do quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. They are intermixed. Uh, exploratory testing is predominant. No more execution based on test cases. Uh, and the communication, here we hit a big problem. No more written communication, face-to-face -face communication. And uh, here is the major obstacle. Now, uh, you can compare, you can, uh, you can put it very simple. In the waterfall-like software life cycles, you have this clear way, path, and the testers have a distinct time frame. In an agile project, no more. Every day is a testing day. Everything is intermixed. You can make the, in the same day a specification review, a unit test, an acceptance test in the same day. It is very difficult to adopt such a tricky way of doing the things. Now, you see, in agile projects, the requirement sources had changed. No more uh, large use cases. We have small user stories, just in time, and frequent change requests. That's the, the key of the Agile, the very substance. Uh, we have each day some features which must be tested because they are implemented. And each month, each iteration, I don't dare to name it sprint. Each iteration. Each iteration, we have some features, some business flows needing to pass the acceptance testing. Test strategy is mainly context driven. So, uh, we must, in a proactive and preventive way, do the testing because uh, the classical 
reactive way doesn't work anymore. We cannot sit and watch the developers writing code, then we have a build to test, we find some bugs, and then we can wait until they fix the bugs. No more such a thing. The test automation is uh, done in a day-to-day -day basis. It's uh, something like a safety net. If you don't have a safety net, that's bad. That's bad not only for you, for the whole team. Uh, how to do the regression testing? How to test the performance, the security, and the uh, reliability, all the rest, all the illities? That's a big head edge. That's a big problem here. And uh, there is a a last but the most important thing, uh, the human side, the soft skills, so-called soft skills. So in my opinion, the most difficult thing for a tester is to adapt to a team where mostly communications are done in a face-to-face -face manner. And this change of mindset implies a different mindset. And this is the most difficult thing to be learned as a tester. You will still use the testing techniques. You will still use testing strategies but you must adapt to work in a self-managed team. And uh, by uh, saying self-managed, that doesn't mean that the team will form itself in a minute. There is no such thing. Every team must pass through the classical four-step process. So first, the team is formed. Then, the second is a little storm, storming, conflicts. Not everyone agrees. The third is norming. So inside the group, there is someone who emerges as a leader. It is not imposed as a leader, it emerges as a leader. And only the final stage is performing. So forming, storming, norming, then performing. Okay, now you already know the Brian Merrick squadrons. I will not repeat. Thanks again. <laughs> Just joking. Um, I uh, rather prefer prefer to uh, speak a little about transitioning to transitioning to agile testing. Um, agile testing must be learned. It must be practiced. It's it's not a thing that cannot be can be done overnight. And uh, you must practice it using pilot projects. My advice is not to start directly using in a real project, or if you dare to do it, be careful how to choose this project. Soft skills improvement is essential, and uh, it goes uh, 
in parallel with team formation issues, which must be managed. You know, in the storming phase, there are constraints to be solved. There are issues to be answered. And uh, for the testers, that means they must adapt. It's very easy to speak about it. It's very difficult to do it. Now, the testers need to learn working in uh, cross-functional teams. And uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, not today, yes, tomorrow, no. Every day. That means, for instance, in acceptance, test-driven development, a tester must make not a pair, must enter in a little cross team formed by a business analyst, a programmer, and a tester, plus possible uh, the product owner, in order to shape the acceptance tests and to watch them being automatized, automatized by the programmer. It's very important to assist the programmer to do the automation of the tests. Okay, now the acceptance uh, driven test development is not the only one answer. There are other solutions too. Test automation, that means continuous integration, unit testing, and automation of the acceptance tests, but this need to be approached not in a single step, but in increments in an iterative way. So do not think that you must and it's a must for you to do unit testing from the first day in the first Agile project. On the contrary, you needed to do it not in the first project, in the second, in the third. In the first project, you need to care about soft skills, team integration, face-to-face -face communication. That's the most difficult thing to learn, not unit testing. Then you see the conclusion, my conclusion is that adopting agile testing is an incremental, iterative, very difficult process. You need to train to be trained. You need to practice. You need to do it using pilot projects. There are in Romania two or three cases of uh, successful agile adoption, I mean for test, for testing. And in each of those two or three cases, the approach was like this. First, train the testers. Second, use a single pilot project, not a big one, a mid-sized or a small size project. Let them practice for a few weeks or a month and then embark them in a real project. Elsewhere, there are problems mm, too difficult to solve. Okay, uh, critical factors here are the whole team approach. So the testers need to learn how to communicate efficiently with developers, with product owner, 
with business analysts and uh, in the face to face communication obtaining feedback is essential in a face to face communications there are three possible ways of losing information if you are looking at my hand you lose information the communication channel <laughs> you see I'm not able to tell everything that I know. That's the second way of losing information. And you are not capable to receive all the information that I pass to you. So those three losing occasions of losing information are real. It happens every time, and uh, you must uh, mitigate this by obtaining feedback. This is the most important lesson. Try to obtain the feedback. Look in the eyes of the listener. And try, not very frequently, but try once in a minute to tell him, did you understand? Please repeat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Only joking. <huh? laughs> um, you see, the mindset of the agile tester must be a proactive one. So he must be very skilled in uh, doing reviews. And uh, I mean not only specification review. He must qualify himself, he must prepare himself to do architectural reviews. He must learn how to do code reviews. It can be learned, you know? It can be. Test automation uh, in a sense of safety net, not more. I'm a not a big fan of automation as a wild desire to automize 100% the testing. I see it as a safety net, as something that frees my time to do exploratory testing and to be very active in the area of acceptance tests. I must develop as a tester a lot of white box testing techniques. So I must not be limited to the black box, classical black box testing techniques. I need to do structural testing. I need to collaborate very closely with the end user, the product owner, the developer, and this must be done in early stages of development. So I must be as proactive as I can as soon as possible. This is the key. And it's not an easy thing to do it. Context-driven is the king. Exploratory testing and session-based exploratory testing, mainly based on a minimal documentation using test charters minimal test charters. Okay, now let's see if we can benefit from the traditional certification scams. For example, ISTQB. How many of you are ISTQB certified? Ah. Well, you see, 
I have a bad news for you. <laughs> ISTQB teaches about benefits of independent testing teams. Wow, that's bad. It teaches us how a team can work managed by a test lead who plans, chooses the metrics, writes the reports, and delegates all the risks to the team. <laughs> Sequential test phases, V model, no use of them. Test cases, maybe, but Listen, exploratory testing is best, is better. Written communication, no. Face-to-face -face communication. All these will not be practiced when testing in agile projects or will be practiced very, very rarely. Well, how to, how to transition, how to survive? It's a, it's a very difficult question. I, uh, I saw the solution as something collaborative, based on trainings, self-learning, and the mindset change. You must read some good books. You see, reading those books, not for the sake of reading a book, but because you want to learn how not to make mistakes. In those books, there are many stories related to unsuccessful attempts, to errors, to mistakes. I personally learn more easily not to make the mistake, not by myself doing that mistake, but from another person's personal experience written in a book or an article or in a presentation, it's more cheaper, it's more safe. Then there are a lot of testing magazines, conferences, and uh, some of them are useful for a good adoption of testing, agile testing skills. And lastly, I, I will recommend approaching not as a target being certified. You know, certification is not very friend with agile. It seems that certification is the opposite of the Agile, no? In a certain view. No, I uh, mean by certified Agile tester, you as a participant to a training where in a very practical way you can learn to work in Agile teams. Why? Because the practical part of the course, of the training, is mainly by working in teams. In teams of three, four persons doing bug hunts on a laptop. Okay, I hope that I do not 
Hmm? That's good. Okay. We have plenty of time for questions. <laughs>